My life is a constant adventure worth taking notes along the way. I was challenged to make myself a fantastic journal to keep with me at all times. I am dying to share with you how you can make your very own. Let's get started. Welcome to my fantastic little adventure journal. This has got an elastic band to hold it together. It has a cork on the outside. It actually has craft text on the inside, which is a paper style product. And it has pockets on either side. I'm going to show you how to do those. It has card stock, which is a nice heavyweight for taking your notes and things on. And as I'm starting to point out, there's a little pocket, hopefully you can see in here where you can stash your treasure. And it is super simple to make. I'm going to walk you through the steps of what size I've created. We have a free printable down in the link below so you can print it out to follow along with the math. But of course this is a technique so you can make any size you want. So I basically started with a piece of card stock which is normally eight and a half by eleven and then my craft tax and my cork are going to be the same size and they're basically a quarter inch larger than I want my pages to be. The pages themselves are going to be folded to create their own spine, I guess. I don't know if I know all the right journal terms yet. But all of these pages together are folded. So when this is folded down, we're going to trim that. And that becomes basically the size of the journal. But we've left ourselves a little bit of a lip on the inside all the way around to keep our pages nice and safe. Okay? So what we're going to first do is prepare our pages. And we do that simply by folding them in half. Okay, so I'm just going to fold them in half this way here. And then I've often used a tool called a brayer. This has got a little rubber roller on the back and it just helps set that crease. But I found out in my life the rounded or the back end of a, um, what is this tool called? A rotary cutter. Sorry, I was in adventure mode, not in sewing mode. Your rotary cutter makes a great smoothener as well. So what I want you to do is take about 10 pages of cardstock. It's an 80 pound uh, paper, so it's good and heavy. And then once you have all of your pages created and folded in half, we're going to stack them all inside of the middle. So they are set inside of each other. So we have one center spine. But what that also does for us then is it makes it so that when these fold over, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but these pages are not level. They're not lined up. They're all kind of stair-stepped, and I don't like that look. So what we're going to do is we're going to first trim this down. So what I've done is I folded it, and while I've got this all nice and secure, I'm pinching it. I'm laying it flat this way. I'm going to take my standard sewing ruler because it helps me to see so nice and I can hold all these pages. Hopefully what you can now see is there's all those stair steps coming up this way and I've got a new X-Acto knife or a sharp blade in my X-Acto knife. I do cut paper sometimes with a rotary cutter but I prefer the X-Acto for this because there's so many layers and I'm just going to start shaving down and shaving down but I am cutting on top of my regular sewing mat. So don't go too deep. Start checking as you get down there. Like yay. Perfect. Okay, so I have squared up all of those edges. So now all of those pages will be nice and flat there. I'm going to do the same to the other side. I'm going to fold it in half again to create that same staircase. I'm going to lay it out and we're just going to do it there while you watch. And just to help things keep square, if you don't know these tricks, I'm using the lines on the top and bottom to secure that it, everything is parallel, excuse me, perpendicular. I tried to get fancy with my geometry terms there. Then I almost said geology, and then you would know I'm just whacked over here anyways. I'm so excited about this darn journal. My brain's already on another adventure. <laughs> okay. These make wonderful gift items as well. So one of these things you could be thinking of is how you can customize as you go. The hard work is now basically finished. And what I want to talk about real quick is the pockets again in the journal, the way this is going to be set up, okay? So what I've gotten together here is I built a pocket. Oh, peanut butter and trail bars. That's the grocery list. You don't need to see all of that. Oh, there's new ideas coming up. You don't need to see all that. I was in Houston during the big parade. You should see all that. Anyways, I've got a pocket here that's really low profile, and it doesn't get in the way if I would be writing on these back pages, right? So... I also have a card slot here that I can keep my caffeine card in, right, that I can stick right in there. So what I'm trying to tell you is the pages or the pockets you put on the back here may affect 
what is the bulk back here. So you may want to put your sleeve pocket back here. You may want to put your little cork pockets and your cork pockets are made at three and a half by five and a half and also made at two inches by four inches. And all of that information again is in that printable if you forgot to go ahead and print that out in that link below, okay? And that gives you all the dimensions for this weird shaped pocket. So for this new journal, let's put this on the back. As I said earlier, the cork pieces are all cut um, excuse me, the cork and the Craftex pieces are all cut. And right now it's a nine by six. That's not right. The journal finishes at nine by six. So it's going to be nine inches by 11 and a half because it was bigger than the paper. Sorry, I'm getting to go too fast. We need to stitch our pockets first onto the inner side, which is gonna be my cork. I said cork, I meant Craftex. <laughs> Better slow down. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna just stitch this outside edge and we're gonna stitch this bottom edge. Yes, we could catch it later on, but I wanna do it now just because it helps everything stay nice and secure. So as I go to the sewing machine, I am sewing now with a quarter inch seam allowance, basically. I am sewing with polyester thread because it's a project like that. And I'm gonna lengthen my stitches up to about a three on my machine, so that's three millimeters so that I'm not perforating too much. Now the Craftex and the cork themselves both sew beautifully, very easy. I am using a Sharps or Microtex style needle, but that's because I always do because I love the way it penetrates. At this bottom corner, I'm gonna try to get the stitch count just right. I went a little far, so I am gonna back up one stitch to rotate. And I'm going to sew down this way. And it does not go all the way to the very center of the journal. It gets very close, but I have some drill marks left out. And at this point, it's also your option. You can sew up this side seam or you can leave it open. It really is your choice. I'm going to go ahead and just show you how to finish that. So I'm gonna back up again, because I've basically secured that bottom corner. Then I can roll over, even though I've got that seam guide in the way, it won't be a problem. And then I can just go ahead and bring this up the side. And the reason I'm doing my stitching now through all of the craft text is so that this stitching doesn't show up on the outside of the cork on the journal itself. Okay, so we've gotten that covered there. Now what we want to go ahead and do is we want to insert our cork pockets. So the bottom one again is going to basically sit, as you could see, on that bottom edge. So we're just going to go ahead and sew that in right now and we're going to go from the top down around the bottom and back up the side. I said top, sorry. <laughs> and I'm just going to use the edge of my presser foot for my seam guide now. And again, I'm going to try to back stitch to secure in case there's wear and tear on these pockets later on. This one also does not go all the way to the center. Easier to stop when you know where that is now because you can see it from the other side. Let's back stitch in the corner anyways, make it look the same. Another little back stitch at the corner there to catch it. And up we go. and we're gonna lock that in as well. I'll do all my thread trimming later on. Now, for this, this is the one that's gonna hold our little coffee card or our ID or whatever we want. So we want enough space at the top that your finger can get in easily, but also that the card doesn't hold out there. So I usually let it sit down about a half of an inch, and then I just eyeball it. You could measure if you want, and we're gonna sew this on the same way we did the other one. But I do want to point out I'm not using any pins to hold anything in place because every hole we make will show later. And again, a very narrow seam allowance because you only have two inches by four inches here and most of those cards are uh, about three and a half by two. Let's back up one to catch that. Oop. Come around the corner. And all but finished here on this last little card pocket. Okay. 
Now we have the entire inside of our journal built, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to secure it to the cork. So the cork has a beautiful texture, and then it has its secure side here. So obviously those two are gonna go together like this. I will point out on mine, the cork itself, um, comes and the way it's made, it has like this selvage edge to it. And I love that myself. And so I wanted to build it into my design element. So just while we're thinking ahead, um, you can see that I had cut my piece to use it there. And then I also made my pockets on the inside match. So that was something that I just like to point out. So every little piece of that cork fabric is very usable and works nice that way. So at any rate, if you were doing that, I would suggest that you keep it on the front because it just kind of gives me a visual place. But Again, I think it's great because I did it. So at any rate, here we go. Now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna sew around all four sides of this, and then I'm gonna sew two channels basically down the center line before I even drill. Okay, so I'm just making sure this is all lined up really nice. It doesn't matter really where I start, so I'm gonna start on the sewing I've done already so that I can hide my stitching, I'm hoping. Again, I could have grabbed all these layers together, but it was a lot of work to do. So now I'm just following that thread I already did. And I'm gonna secure all of these layers here. And you should be thinking, of course, what color threads you're using, make sure that you like that. And if you have the opportunity to do um, what are considered stretch stitches or like triple stitches. They add a lot more thread using a lightweight thread, but it looks like that heavy hand done look. That's a nice appearance without adding a lot of work or distress on the actual fibers. And all of this sewing really does show. So do your best to keep a straight line using that presser foot as your guide. Sometimes I go a little too fast and then I love the project when I'm done and I look back at the quality of the prototypes and think, boy, if I would have just gone a little slower, it would look sharp as could be. Coming into that last corner here, one more stitch. And again, just following that thread line down where we put that cool sleeve pocket all the way down into that corner, a light back stitch just to secure the threads. Okay, and then there you can see that I've gone all the way around all four sides. Now, what I want to do is I want to take here and basically make two channels of sewing lines through here because I'm gonna drill out a hole in the center and I'm gonna drill out a hole three quarters of an inch from the top edge and the bottom edge and I'm gonna drill a hole a half an inch apart and a half of an inch apart there. I wanna put the sewing in now so that I keep it wide enough. You could probably chalk it, but again, everything we draw will also show. So what I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna use the outside edge of my presser foot on the center seam. So maybe I should point that out. I had this center seam here where it was already folded and creased into the craft text. So I can see kind of a groove. So I'm gonna use that groove as kind of a marker and I'm gonna create a quarter inch channel on either side. I'm also gonna start my stitching right where that other stitching around the perimeter. So it looks really sharp. Good, got it. Back stitch once there. And now I'm just gonna do this straight line down using that quarter inch perimeter. And the cool thing is now, I'm lined up basically to catch that thread on that sleeve pocket. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't an option after all to leave it open. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna just spin it. I'm gonna use that same seam allowance, but on the other side now, it won't catch the thread on these pockets, I don't think, because of the size difference. Still locking it in just though. and then stopping right at that top sewing line. So now we have those two parallel runs of stitching and all we're gonna need to do is we're gonna drill it on out and I believe I have a little um, 
quarter inch bit. Do I even have that written in my notes with my glasses? You think I'd be able to see it? I don't, but we'll get it. You know what? We'll drop it in the bottom of the video for you. So presto, it's showing up right now. I believe the bit size. And what we're going to do is I have a block of wood. Never drill into your cutting mat, right? And I have my drill. And what we're going to do is, hey, you know what? Again, let's slow down. Let's practice on our cardstock. It's much more replaceable than our cover right now. This thing is like perfect, right? So let's take our cardstock. And what we want to make sure we do is we line up our cardstock drilling to the exact same alignment as here. So what I'm going to show you is we're going to find our center mark on this. So it's eight and a half. I haven't cut that way, right? So it should be four and a quarter. That should be my center mark, like yay. Okay, then from center to center is three and a quarter down. And then they're a half of an inch apart. So that means that three and a quarter up. And then a half of an inch apart should line us up for our drilling. But again, we're going to practice on our cardstock because we can always make our cardstock easily again. So let's start with our center. And I'm going to keep that fold in the middle and I have that block of wood down there below me and I'm just going to set the drill bit in place, turn her on and let her go to work. Like yay. It's going to slide up here. And again. I'm still making sure my center's lined up. I wish I had an octopus as a pet with all these different hands I need. Okay. Okay, so now our pages are all drilled, so let's keep them somewhat in order there. Then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here, now that you know we can, nice and slow. Now, with the, the real good trick is keep the bit running as you come back out, right? That'll keep the cork and the craft text a little smoother. Okay. Don't touch it while it's running. Doesn't really hurt kids at home, but don't try it. And the last one there. Okay, now on the back, you can see we have just light little holes that have punched through there. And now we're ready to assemble. And the cool thing about this is the way we're going to put it together is the pages are also removable when you want. I did find that using a chopstick um, really does help get things through the hole. So I'm actually going to bore these holes out a little bit more right now as I'm getting started. If you don't have a um, chopstick providing restaurant in your neighborhood, you can often find a chopstick in a bag of stuffing because they come to help move stuffing around. So it's actually a chopstick. One chopstick is a sewing tool. Two chopsticks are used for eating. That's how it works there. So we're just going to make sure that all of this is reamed out nice, make life easy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to line this up here. And what we want to do is we want to take our piece of elastic and it's about 27 inches if I remember correct. Yes, 27 inches it is. And what we're going to do is we need to get a loop to go out the center. So I found in my work, it was easiest for the loop part to punch it through the paper and then the journal. Okay, so I have the loop coming out the back now. Every other insert is going to be a single strand and it was really easy to get it through the journal itself. Now that that's back here, let's do something to protect ourselves. So we're just going to slide our pen in here and I'm going to put that cap in there to keep me from pulling the loop back through, right? And now from here, what I want to do is I'm going to take one strand and I'm going to go through the pages, out of the journal, back through the journal, back through the pages. Okay, so I have that now on that side. This is why that pen, oh, I was going to show you how the pen was coming in handy. I could feel myself tugging against it. 
Okay, now we don't want to lose track of this tail either. So like, I don't know if you want to put a wonder clip or something to hold it, just keep it from pulling back through. Okay, and then part of the reason I was struggling was I hadn't taken the time to just clean that up. So we're gonna go through the pages. Okay, so I went through the journal. I'm coming back in the back side of that journal, coming through those pages. Won't take but a couple of weeks to get through that last hole. There it is. Oh, that one went so smooth, yay! And the crowd goes nuts. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring these two tails back together here and basically just tie a little knot in them. So I'm gonna pull them both up together, make a little loop, push it through here. Okay, that way it could be untied later on if you want so you could replace your pages because these are gonna be really special pages. And now what we have basically is I can pull this pen out. Of course, I need to trim my threads. I can pull this in secure. It pulls right around like that. And you now, voila, have yourself a fantastic adventure journal and you are ready to set out on your next big adventure. As a matter of fact, in the comments below, I wanna know where you wanna go on your next trip. So drop that below and we'll see you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action.